GE for Corda, Agus Faltero of Istach, Gaji, our webinar, Anokt, a kind of Fina Sosna Splodraka, a talk Kerhila Kayla, a Gwail Brathok, a Go Porchla Irish Heart Foundation. Is Misha Jordan a gown, Agus is May a Tomer, Ifagok, Bonskola, Leshen Kshkame, Gwail Brathok, Agus in Enochram Anokt and Shot, Ta Christina Duff uh, from the Irish Heart Foundation. Nive mud a kind of Fina Arakas Anokt is a Jiru er Naganivyakti Agus Naglushakti at Hamud. Anish La Roy Christina Lin, Fina Bonthoshti of Winnen Slash and Shkame Sha Agus Naglushakti at Hosh Shkame. Gurmagot, Deirdre. So, as Deirdre mentioned, um, I'm the school's physical activity coordinator in the Irish Heart Foundation. Um, so, I just want to talk a little bit, first of all, around physical activity and why it's so important, specifically for children. So, they say that if physical activity, if the benefits of it could be um, bottled and marketed, it would be one of the most valuable medicines um, that ever was. So, there are just so many benefits to it. So, you're probably familiar with a lot of these, and there might be some that you. Um, haven't kind of heard about. So heart health, of course, um, Irish Heart Foundation, huge, hugely important for us, really important for children to get into the habit of being active and enjoying physical activity from an early age. Strong muscles and bones, again, children are growing big and strong, and um, we want them to be as um, strong as they can. Balance and coordination, improved cognition, so um, being able to process thoughts and have a kind of um, clear mind, better sleep, concentration and learning. There's lots of evidence um, now to show an increase in academic performance from physical activity, confidence and social skills. So interacting with other children um, through physical activity is really beneficial and overall well-being. So um, COVID and lockdowns have really shown all of us, I think, how important physical activity is and how challenging um, it can be sometimes to get that physical activity, but how much better we feel when we do it. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about the types of physical activity. So this isn't necessarily something that you need to know all the language of. Um, it's not a test or anything. It's just to give you an idea of what um, different types of physical activity look like. So the first one is aerobic activity. So this is the stuff that gets your heart really pumping, gets you out of breath. Um, this is, some people would call this cardio. So this is things like um, running, skipping, anything that's kind of a, a high intensity. Um, and when it comes to intensity, we talk about two different intensities. So that's moderate and vigorous. So moderate is when the heart is beating faster than normal and breathing, breathing is slightly harder than normal. And vigorous is when heart is beating much faster and breathing is much harder. So we sometimes talk about what's called the talk test um, to distinguish between these. So if you're out for a walk with a friend at kind of a medium pace, um, if you're doing moderate activity, it gets a little bit more challenging to keep a conversation going, but you can still keep talking whereas if the two of you were running or doing something quite high intensity it'd be much more difficult to keep a conversation going you'd have to be taking uh, bigger breaths and um, to keep the oxygen coming into your body and it'd be a little bit more challenging to actually hold a conversation muscle and bone strengthening then. So this is things um, like any sort of resistance exercise um, or weights. So this is things that build strength in the muscles and bones. And of course, this is important um, for children because their bodies are growing and developing. And then this flexibility. So things like stretching or gymnastics or yoga, things that lengthen the muscles and keep them healthy. And um, so it's really important to get a combination of these three. And um, so if it's a case that, you know, the children are always um, running, that that's great, but it's also good to get some flexibility stuff, some stretches or some muscle and bone strengthening things. And um, so it's good. We all need a mixture of these three. So in terms of how we get these types of physical activity. So there's kind of four main um, categories of where we get this physical activity. So for children, structured activity tends to be things that are organized by adults and um, that usually have a specific time that they start and stop and are usually quite planned in their structure. So things like sports training or lessons and um, physical education or any sort of fitness class. Then there's the unstructured. This is usually kind of child led or child directed. So things like yard time and um, just having a bit of a dance, building a fort or playing outside. Then there's active travel, so things like walking, biking or scooting to or from school um, and activities of daily living. So this is one that's really important as well for adults. Um, so things like taking stairs, doing household chores, um, 
for all sorts of things that you might not necessarily look at them as I'm about to do physical activity. But if you're, you know, putting laundry on a washing line, there's a lot of stretching and moving within that. If you're vacuuming, there's a lot of, um, the, you know, it's a certain level of intensity that does actually make you sweat and get you out of breath. Um, so all of these things add together to um, contribute to our daily physical activity. So just a question to think about now um, is how much physical activity do you think that children and young people should do for health benefits? So this is asking what are the national physical activity guidelines for children and young people? So is it 30 minutes five times a week? Is it 60 minutes every day? Or is it 180 minutes every day? So if you just want to take a couple of minutes now to just think about that. Um, have you seen these numbers before? Do you know what the recommendation is for children? Um, and which one would you choose? So the answer is 60 minutes every day for children and young people up to the age of 18. If you're looking at the other ones, um, and thinking mm, they look familiar as well. So 30 minutes, five times a week or 150 minutes per week. And this is of moderate to vigorous physical activity. And um, that's the recommendation for adults. 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity is the recommendation for children and young people. And 180 minutes every day is actually the recommendation for children under six. So this is the early years guideline. Now, the reason that is so high is because that doesn't need to be moderate and vigorous physical activity. That's any sort of movement. So for younger children who are um, developing um, physically and mentally, um, any sort of movement is really important, even if it doesn't get the heart rate up or cause a sweat. So that is the um, recommendations and that's 60 minutes every day. It doesn't have to be one block of 60 minutes. It can be five or 10 minutes at a time. It can be any amount, it could be two or three minutes. And the latest World Health Organization recommendations that came out at the end of 20. 20 and um, basically recommend that any amount of movement is better than none at all so whether it's 30 seconds or a minute everything counts towards your health on the opposite end of that then is sedentary time so um sedentary behavior is kind of a newer area of research in health um, because what um, doctors and clinicians and researchers are starting to see is that even when people do physical activity, sometimes the amount of time they spent being sedentary actually undoes the good of those benefits. So the recommendation is to try and limit the amount of time spent being sedentary, particularly recreational screen time. So to try and use recreational time to do something active instead of um, being on a screen. So it's long interrupted periods of sitting that are harmful to health. So if you think about that in the context of schools, we want to try and break it up so that children aren't sitting for hours at a time, that they can get up every so often and have a little bit of a movement break with their Sussumus Glodrica um, and break up those periods of time. So as I mentioned, um, the fields of research now are seeing that long periods of sedentary time are actually affecting health and it's led to what's called the active couch potato phenomenon so this is joe spud on his couch he's saying i went to the gym on monday i did my 150 minutes as is the adults guidelines therefore i don't have to do anything else for the rest of the week so he's actually not the amount of time that he's spending sitting in the meantime is actually doing damage to his health even though he does say one big bout of physical activity in the week so it's really important to be active little and often um and it's a really good um habit for children to get into of not sitting for long periods and to be able to get up and move and to stretch and to use their bodies every so often so in terms of um, physical activity in schools, this is the school physical activity pyramid. So in the same way of the um, food pyramid, the bits at the top are the ones that we want to minimize and the wide part at the bottom is the stuff that we want to, as much of as we can. So these are just the different forms that physical activity can take within a school or within a classroom. So sedentary time at the top is the narrowest part. We want to minimize that where we can, just the sitting at the desks. Active games and celebrations in the green. So this is where there are opportunities, say if you're having um, parties or there's milestones or festivals or celebrations, um, where can we include physical activity there? So is it, um, is it a that we put on music and we all dance? Is it that we choreograph a dance for a particular celebration? Um, is it that we play active games? Um, so really positive associations with physical activity and incorporating it into special moments within um, the school community. Then there's PE. So 
Um, PE and physical activity are similar, but they're not the same. So physical education has these specific learning outcomes and progressions, whereas physical activity is any sort of movement. So um, it's important to acknowledge that um, physical activity during the school day is not all PE and PE is something separate to that general physical activity. Now over COVID and with restrictions that has been more challenging. So of course, sometimes the best we can do is some physical activity for PE, but just to be aware that physical activity and PE are not the same thing. Active breaks then, so things like using your busy breaks, your sustenance blodrica, um, to rejuvenate the class, to kind of, um, to uh, get moving and to kind of get the brain moving again. Um, integrated lessons then, so um, using physical activity as a means to teach subject content. So say a nature walk um, for SESE, um, or maybe using your um, body to talk about maths and things like angles with your arms. And then there's the everyday activities in the orange. Um, so this is things like playing in the yard, um, active travel. Um, so these are the things that are like fun to do and that we can pop into the day um, and give the opportunities for pupils to be active. Okay, so I'll hand back over to Deirdre now just to talk a little bit about uh, Sustenus Blodrica itself. Gurmaga, Christina, Agis, Second Chivin Shin, Own San Ola Sata Rancha, Egg, Christina Lynn, Gur Over, Broad, Agus Ahush, Ata Arinya, Ava Eglarsh, Levensha, Fuin Naskasha, Idra Glushakti, Agus and Gaiga. So, came folk around him are busy. Well, Higamar go a busy tide of onaha agus glean chalish and ja clock this agus ni more rog ra busy and usaging in lower shomri uh nor hussi my hay nig muna agus is menic uh agus may a crinyha fornia no lehin the in service no marshin agus mudig see egg and marg marvuntary good digging wood uh kiko dacker is a toshe fanuk to the heed on trave shishin agus is just in tuck at agin and shot on hoilga agus neglushakti a koha who len a so we'll just have a quick look. Busy Breaks is at Sotlupa. So Erin Shay the Hulashom Marang is a tear shot, rather be ain't up top of top doing ya. Mark Higginwood, Tushkamim with her court hug of Suscolony, Keiko Eggsu is a tall and scale of Skull by Skull. August is Fager A. Usage Le Gok Ash, August Gok Level Abel Top. Kamatlishin is Fajr Ida Usaj Tavis Jig, Agus uh the Jokak Shahiga Detective Ida Usaj Egamalia Freshen. Is game freshen at Aska Lehusaj, so Nilain Tral of Savreshik Tastal Web, Agus Tasha Daraha in Irunch Dunsho Maranga, Nilik Tastal in Arira, Akans Boss, Egan Marg Fain at Hagan Dalta. August Tasha Aska Galore Usaj in Snashomri Il uh, Rang and a Fresh and Kumatlishin. Um, so Tom Mask on in Sick and Eve of Tika Vedicla Gok Dalta Salt of Went Astu. Kumatlishin is Osh Intok Atha Aun and Kohahu a Kirk and Keen. Agus Mar Ekenshivan Shah is a Kohahu Naglushati Agus Aguayaga at Homewood. Akta Nask and a Curriculum Fod Fad and Clor. Agus Tashid Fervor Hagama Agus Lefekal Sela Flower. Agus Kamatlishin, Neil Ain Omiak de Geshlisha, so was Osh Ain Tokata and on Slancha Augustan Olana. So Marsha Hain took up Poshta, Nogotal, the Egdol, Egaluce Fane, Agus Ega Level Fane. So Mardorch Christina, Ta Defriak, Aun, Idra and Ron Kerpidicus, Agus Naganiviakti, Physiculus, Shoma Ranga, Agusha Sampla Intak, and the Osh, a Ta Mudanana Hur and Erend Dunna, Nasusana, Splosericus, Shoma, Ava Agin, and Avarans Kud, no, no, Bioganinis Wuda, Mas Me and Liv. So, call will uh, Susnish Blodricha Le Fall. Well, the Gok Olis Winch Game Shaw Air and Sea of Irishheart.ie forward slash busy breaks. August Norhain took a father the shin, Fecky Shiv, a busy a hain and shin, let uh, and Kirkel Agus and Gaelga Scrifa Air. Agus ma click on into this jacker, busy ask Gaelga, ton Hoshni Air Father, top Ferberha Agin Air Fall and Shin. So is Achwani Ranga at Agin Fuloher, so Ma Vranin to Shinta and Laron. So in Salaron Shinta Naganiviakti Agus Naklehi Erfad. Agus is Osh Inta Kata Aun at a Rancha it tree quidge no caraquidge. Is Osh Inta Kata Aun at a Rancha it Gerahuidge Agus at an Irunch than a bandy curriculum erfad. 
Ta an love lar taki up the ang fresh and concaru live shimmer vintery, at Vergwail de Hain a curtain keen to shimmer, August to glue folklore and come up. August and three are rather tall of file air and sieve, now on poster, a larians in the susnish blodurka erfad gasol air. In Salaron and Shah, Fekitug will shall lag here mock go. Gahildata agus gabrivra agus fecanch of eggs who looked in snaposti agus sakomish at all a fecal agus salavlar taki up to a fecanch of go in a frosty usajaka a hands with gach kyak at all laggy a mock keely and chishin go to an on the sprock uncle of a agat hain marvunter con a hail a harkin keen no moscow is fatal at shecky and a brain of uncle come on Agus ag bon gach lahanach ta an koha husha an rathigamud keik u ganas ta kursi ama in snashomri ranga. Agus is feidr na rangani sha ar fad a koha hu leis na hafer curriculum ella. Agus an uusr sha is oas ein ta kata ar fad ar an si of koma na gwaal shraf fishan dara agus jenta agin a currents na clihi oas vergor mach. Agus is Jeshi Sha is Fedri de Usad Snashomri Leshna Poshti, Fekishiv Edi Nihirnik and Shin a kind chasquega agus a leru na Ganeviakti, is Fedri Lena Poshti, Idilan and Snashomri, is Fedri and Shin Naposhti occur in Mon na Ganeviakti, a Sturu Sashomra Ranga, Agus Klushishiv Hain and Fariakt, Agus and Folklore a Hay and Slesh na Ganeviakti Erfad. Agus an sin feicí sibh an nánascana trás curriculum ag bun an láthnaigh an sin. Agus tá tila áisne faoi sin ar fáil freisin ar an sí of busy breaks. So, in sa fóster agus sna sa faoi sin a hén slais an póster sa sa an sráh glúshachtaí ar fáil a tá le fáil. Agus tá trí cuid le feicáil an feicí sibh an sin sa bán jarrug tá scuil na mata na gach leis sa tá mar a fáil réil a bheith ag gach boga agus a glúshach agus tá glúshachtaí a gach leis sa ar fáil. An sin bí ag púfáil sa tá roinnt boga agus glúshachtaí a gach leis sa agus a rís inta a tá fhuta le tortri nara go bhfuil sé tá curtha in iarúint de level an fáiste agus in iarúint de chumas an fáiste freisin sa seo mar ranga agus ag an dara. Ear to earth, Sheena a bunt acid vein. So to Jesh and Shaw and three quid Shaw a usage like Hela, no eat of Rishish Seuss in the mirror in the egg sula. August fresh and thought and fish on shin air fall air and sieve, Irish Heart Foundation come on. And it's an rod is fiar fwin shrasha na gwilt e an irinch de gach level comish. And Christina's just going to speak to us now about how to adapt each activity uh, to, to every level of ability. Gurmagot Deirdre. So I just want to talk a little bit about um, adapting um, activities for different abilities. So um, as we know, all pupils are so different in terms of um, the things that they enjoy, um, the things that they excel at, the things they find challenging. Um, and we kind of think that we could give you loads of different um, ideas for ways to adapt uh, these activities, but they might not necessarily suit your class or specific pupils within your class. So the best thing that we can do is to give you the confidence to adapt it yourselves um, and to empower you to be able to use this um, very useful um, tool called STEP. So STEP is an acronym and it stands for Space, Task, Equipment and People. Um, so I can't emphasize enough how useful this tool is um, and how it can be used for um, children of all abilities or it can be used to differentiate different activities within your own class um, and give choices of different ways to do activities. Um, so I'm going to go through it. Um, it might seem intimidating at first, like there's a lot to remember, but once you start to use it and once you start to practice using this, you really will start to see the opportunities in all types of physical activity, whether it's Susanus Blodricka or um, your PE class. Um, it's really, really a useful tool that you can use. So the first aspect of STEP is space. So when we think about space, we're talking about the physical environment. So where does the activity take place? Is it inside the classroom? Um, is it outdoors? Is it out in the field? Is it on a hard surface? 
Is it in a busy classroom or is it in a kind of quieter space? Um, and also where is the child positioned? So we, um, within the booklets, um, nearly all of the activities are designed for doing um, in your seat at a desk um, or standing at the desk. But that doesn't mean that this is the only way that they can be done. So they could be done um, sitting on the floor and um, they could be done um, standing outside. Um, there's lots of different ways that the children could be positioned to do the activities. Um, and then to consider things like the sensory um, properties within the area. So is it a very loud classroom? Um, is it very um, chaotic? Is it quite stressful for the child? Um, could they you do? Could the activity be done in a less um, busy space? Could you go to a different classroom? Could it be done in the hall? Um, these are just the sort of questions to start asking yourself about these different activities. Um, what could I do differently in this activity um, to make it more appropriate for specific pupils within my class or for my class overall? Then there's the task. So what is the goal of the activity and what are your pupils being asked to do? So one aspect of that is how is the activity explained? So is it a case that you give all of the instructions at the beginning and then everybody does the activity? Is it that you launch straight into the activity and then add in bits of information? Or is it that you give a little bit of information, try a little piece and then add something else on? There's also um, the duration of the activity. So is it a quite short and snappy break or is it something longer that takes a little bit more um, focus and concentration? Um, is it something that's against the clock? Is it something like you have 30 seconds to do this task or 30 seconds, how many of this particular movement can you do? Or is it um, how long does it take to do X amount of movements and um, then things like the speed or the activity or sorry the speed of the activity or the movement so um as you saw in the video previously there with Aideen, um, there was jumping jacks. So I'll use jumping jacks as an example. So jumping jacks can be um, out and in or out and in, or they could be out and in and out and in. You can change the rhythm or the speed to make it more or less um, challenging. Um, and then breaking down the movement. So again, going back to the video with Aideen, with the jumping jacks, she gave the option of using just the upper body or just the lower body or putting both together. And um, so it's really good to be able to give choices to your class as well, that you can do it this way or you can do it this way. And it's up to you which one you want to do. And um, when it comes to task, um, from our point of view, it's important that the pupils are moving and um, it's great to be getting your cupola focal in. You have the vocabulary um, in the um, handbook and you can use that whatever way you want. So it doesn't matter if the activity that you're doing once you adapt, it doesn't look like what's in the book. That's absolutely fine. You can use your own creativity in this to adapt it for your class. Equipment then is a really useful one. So um, there's not a huge amount of equipment in Sustenus Blodrica, um, but that doesn't mean that you can't add equipment in in different ways. So when it comes to equipment, um, what sort of equipment is used or could be used? So consider things like the size of the equipment. Um, is it big or is it small? If you've got a bigger version of something, would it make it um, easier to do? Would it um, enable more uh, pupils to be able to use it? Um, the weight is it heavy or light and then the sensory properties so color shape the texture the sound so when it comes to um balls and doing anything that involves throwing and catching um a big ball like a big light ball like a beach ball is a lot more feasible when you're starting off to catch than something um small and heavy like a tennis ball so if you're doing catching activities um with a small ball could you use a bigger ball that's lighter that moves slower um, and that enables pupils to um more feasibly uh, use it and then sensory balls so there's lots of different types of textures different weights and um, different feels uh different bright colors and um, the green one with the holes there that is a bell ball so for people who are visually impaired it gives um, an audible signal of where the ball is um, and then some things that we absolutely love um, for physical activity are what I call the three Bs, which is balloons, beanbags, and bubbles. So balloons are fantastic because they move quite slowly. So it gives time to actually think about where it's going to go. And um, they're easy to catch. And um, it's really good for kind of visual tracking and practicing, like watching where something's going to go and where to move your arms to. There's so many different games you can play around um, balloons. Beanbags then similarly, um, they're quite um, 
they're quite easy to um, catch and you don't have to catch them necessarily just in your hands. You could catch them with your arms as well. And um, they kind of conform to different shapes um, and they also don't roll away. So sometimes with balls, it can be quite frustrating doing throwing and catching things because if you don't catch the ball, it rolls away. You have to run after it. It kind of adds sort of a sense of defeat to it sometimes. So beanbags are brilliant. They just fall on the ground, you pick it back up and you throw it again. And then bubbles are fantastic because who doesn't love bubbles? So anything where you're, you know, out and about in the yard and you can blow bubbles so you can jump up and try and pop the bubbles you can jump up and try to catch the bubbles you can run after the bubbles and they really do inspire movement in a really um natural and exciting way and then people so who else is involved or what way are the pupils um interacting with others within that task so is it teacher led is it a case that you are giving all of the instruction and the pupils are following along or is it a case maybe where um certain pupils are in charge or giving different directions or calling out um, calling out movements. Um, is the task done individually? So is it something where each pupil is individually doing a task or is it something that they're with a partner um, or in a small group? Um, who else then is in the group? Is it someone who is kind of a, a similar um, level of skill to them or is it somebody who's a little bit more skilled and um, there's pros and cons of each way you could kind of know within your classroom who would help somebody else along um, and then um, there's also the option to if you have an SNA who maybe takes small groups out of the classroom to do um, to do movement breaks that would be people as well um, so just in terms of putting this into practice from the Susness Blodrica activities. So um, I just have one example here, but we do have more examples on um, the website. And if there's a, a number of the slides within this presentation that have links to the website. So if you do want the slides, um, I'm sure Deirdre can send them on to you and you can um, navigate through all of the links from the slides. So this particular activity, um, Puck Lame Pian Louis. So this is, we have your Pian Louis on the ground, um, either, um, straight or sideways and you're jumping over the pencil in different ways so that's the activity that's in the booklet but there's lots of different ways that you could adapt that um for different pupils or for different classes so if we look at space it could be done inside or outside and um, it could be done at the desk or it could be done maybe all in one line um on one side of the room um, you could make a line that's longer than the length of a pencil. So we recommend you use pencil. Um, in the video for this, we use a meter stick, um, but you could use something else. You could use tape or something that makes it longer. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be just a pencil. Then there's a task. So what is the actual um, goal of it and what is the movement that's being done in it? So instead of jumping, it could be simply stepping. It could be stepping forward and back, stepping side to side. It could be long steps, small steps. You could mix it up within that. Um, or it could be crawling. It could be a long line that um, you're crawling along with left on one side and right side on the other or crawling across and using different parts of the body. Um, or it could be a seated movement on the floor. So it could be something where the pupils are sitting on their bum and they are lifting their legs from the left side of the pencil to the right side of the pencil. So completely changing the movement from jumping, but still a really good um, um, a really good exercise for the children to do and um, really using the core and just getting moving. So equipment then, um, it could be short lines or one long line. So you could use chalk outside, you could use masking tape or electrical tape inside to form a longer line. Um, you could label each side. So you could have um, lava ash, lava clay. Um, so that you actually give the direction of to the left side to the right side or you could use colors instead of directions so instead of saying left and right it could be move to the blue side move to the red side crawl to the left side jump to the right side and give different um different um ideas there and then in terms of people so is it individual is it everyone um at their own uh desk jumping over their pencils? Is it one long line inside or outside the classroom? Um, and then things like taking turns to call out directions or movements. Um, and we'd always encourage as well that with activities like this, there's the opportunity to um, give pupils um, the, the chance to come up with different movements or different ideas. So even though we have specific jumps kind of named in the activity, put it back in your class and ask, what else could you do? Could you touch the ground? Could you do three jumps in a row um, and get them to really take ownership of the movement and come up with different ideas? So I'll pass back to Deirdre just to talk about the Busca Busy. 
Gurmela Mahak Christina. So Marhulishiv and Shin Ishgame Aisket Ha Aunla Kur Evimes Nishomri Ranga. Agus Mar Led and Vuntura Molam Jeev Buska Busy Ebet Agav Sashomri Ranga. Uh Louis Christina na three bees at in Aksha Morang is Doka, Agus Mullenwood to Mach, Boska Agav Leshna Hosh Nisha, Atha New Sosh Nishomri, Dustna Klehi Erfat. Harkan Furin Gwil Vratok, Gwilin, Gaumut Buekaso Pri, the Irish Heart Foundation, as in Go I Brew, Erin Chanskavisha, Gaumut Buekas Freshen, Le Furst Nagaga, as in Winu Lanunuk, a hook and sheep lunch game, Gwil Vratok, Agus de Cog, Erin and Winu, Erna Hosh Nisha, Erbert. Mata tila keshna aga fui ein gane din shkame sha. Is fejr chak de dangwalin er na man ho shielta, tomuch le fekal er Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Agus gan nusershin, tana sholti e fust na domahain agus Christina er fall anish eg bon an lahnik. Tosulagin gumwani shiv salt agus tarva as an shkame sha. Agus gan i rowi live vor boshti agus vor show me ranga a kurt boga agus a glushak le busy flong a fall